Before we get into individual stick mechanics, there are a few basic principles that I want to talk about um, that relate to all stick mechanics and how the stick flows. So in this first video, I'm going to talk about, first off, what makes a good telling blow. Secondly, the physics, the basic principles of physics involved in throwing a good blow. And lastly, I'm going to talk about how I use my body to, uh, to, to employ those basic principles of physics. So in understanding what makes a good telling blow, um, there's a lot of discussion, I'm sure, about um, sufficient force. That's the general standard that we have. Everybody has their own idea about what sufficient force means. Um, and that varies widely from kingdom to kingdom. But for the most part, um, we're looking for what I refer to as a telling blow, as in something your, your opponent can tell you struck them with. Um, and some of the things that need to happen in order for, to do that is, ideally you want to be striking clean and unimpeded uh, with, no, with, with your opponent not blocking anything with either their sword and their shield. But some of the other things that need to happen in order for your opponent to feel a blow and for them to tell that they've been struck. Um, one of the big things about this is the thing that people feel is energy transfer. Now, we don't feel a push, we feel a punch. We feel a concussive pulse. Um, if, if you're pushed in a fight, um, you're, you're, the equilibrium in your ear canal is going to compensate for that and you're not actually going to feel impact on that. You're not going to feel yourself moving because your ears are going to compensate for that and make it feel like you're not really moving at all. So what we feel is punch, we feel like concussive blast, we feel like that, that, um, um, that shock. And so the way we get that is through energy transfer. It's getting a uh, two pound object traveling at a certain speed and it's taking all of the energy and it's driving it through one particular point on, on a target. So if I were to if I were to throw straight down on my opponent, there's a greater chance that this, this blow is gonna slide off of the helmet one way or another. So what I'm looking for is I wanna make sure that every blow that I throw is going to strike perpendicular to the surface that I'm targeting. I want a good right angle on every target that I'm that I'm shooting at, okay? So I want to have this, because if I have that right angle there, there is only one direction for that energy to go, and that's through the target. And so we wanna make sure that every blow that we're throwing lands perpendicular to that as much as possible. Um, it gets a little, and any, any variation off of that straight line, if I'm hitting at a 45 degree here, um, I may still hit, I may still hit clean, but it's not gonna have the same kind of energy transfer that I get if I uh, hit perpendicular to that target. So that's the ideal is we wanna make sure we're hitting perpendicular. The other thing is if I throw so that my hand is in line to the target right here, um, then I'm striking at the target here. So what I wanna do is my, uh, as I finish a blow, my hand is actually gonna cross my center line right here so that when I finish, I'm looking directly under my blade at my opponent's face. And what this does is it makes it so that as I'm crossing the center line, I'm driving the energy through the target as opposed to stopping right at the target. So if I finish this here so that my hand is in line with my target, I'm only throwing to the target. So we wanna make sure to cross the, the center line. Also, um, some of the, part of the way that I get the power on my stick is through stick rotation. I'll cover that a little bit more in the physics. Um, however, if I, if I can get 180 degrees of rotation on my stick from my shoulder right here, if I can get that much rotation and I hit clean and unimpeded, this is gonna deliver a telling blow. That is gonna deliver something that your opponent can tell that they've been struck with. So we want to have, we wanna be landing perpendicular to the surface that we're striking, we want to have our, our hand cross the center line, and we want to have 180 degrees of rotation in, in all of our shots. So that's a little bit about what makes a telling blow, what people feel, and again, we're looking for energy transfer. So the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, physics, the basic principles of physics that are involved in stick mechanics and in fighting. So um, 
Force equals mass times acceleration. That means I can take a two pound object traveling at a certain speed, um, we'll say a generous estimate of 60 miles an hour, that is going to deliver a certain amount of force as it, as it, as it impacts the target. Um, and so how, we want to have as much as we can, we wanna, we wanna maintain as clean line a pos as possible for the delivery so that we can, we can get that stick rotation that we need. Um, one of the other things that applies to us is um, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Um, just as it takes more electricity to start a light bulb um, than it does to keep it burning, it takes more time for us to begin a shot than it does for us to finish a shot for the most part. And the, the largest time expense that we have is in generating motion and in getting the stick moving at all. And in a minute here, I'm going to go into how I, how I do that. Um, but that's something we want to want to keep in mind when we're doing power work, when we're doing stick mechanics, is that we're trying to find the most efficient way possible to get the stick moving at all. Once the stick is moving, then um, then it will have all of the, the force that it needs because force equals mass times acceleration. One of the other things that I work with a lot regarding um, physics is, um, this is something that will be familiar to um, airspace, <laughs> Aerodynamic engineers, people that understand aircrafts and center of gravity and that sort of thing. It's what's referred to moment arm or arm in moment. And what that is, is that means that the further away my hand gets from my shoulder, the heavier this object becomes on the other end and the more difficult it is to control this object. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm keeping my hand in my core as much as possible. Because if I, for instance, if I had a gallon of milk in this hand and I could hold it here almost indefinitely, but as I get my hand further away from my body, the object becomes heavier and heavier. And while this is only a two pound stick, um, it, it still applies that the further it gets away from my body, the heavier this object is gonna become. And that's a very basic principle of physics um, that, that basically creates more work on the end of the stick as you're, as you're throwing your shots. So the next thing I'm going to talk about now is um, how I use my body to get those mechanics to happen. Um, there are a number of ways in which we can generate motion and to get the stick moving. Um, as I frequently say, there is no right way to do this, uh, but there are a lot of wrong ways to do this. And this is a way that I have found that is efficient and gets the stick moving easily and above all else is kind to your body so that you can be doing this for a lifetime. Um, so there, one of the most common ways that we see the people doing it is um, having the elbow out here and using this kind of lever action at the shoulder where people will kind of chicken wing down here and throw to be able to, to kind of pull that down. Um, Anytime your elbow gets away from your core, you are encouraging lever action at the rotator. The rotator cuff muscles are a, a very delicate, very complex series of muscles, um, the job of which is solely to keep your arm from flying out of your shoulder socket. The rotator cuff is not the lifting, the burden um, carrying muscle group in your shoulders. Um, that kind of relies on the, the deltoid muscle, which is at the, at the, at the top, the lower, below your shoulder at the top here. Um, so that's the one that actually gives you lift, but we're not really even using that for the purpose of, of getting this moving. But anytime your elbow gets away from your core, you're encouraging lever action at the shoulder. And if you want to save your shoulders, you want to get away from that. So the most efficient means that I've found for generating motion, for getting the stick moving at all, is by using hip rotation. Um, as I use, as I use my hips, just a little bit. Okay. So, uh, as I use my my hips to generate motion, as I as I rotate my hips, um, what happens is, as as you notice, as I get this hip rotation from my hip through my torso up through my shoulder, you're gonna notice that my um, my sword my shoulder naturally moves as part of this hip rotation. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So once we get the stick moving with just this simple hip rotation here, 
and I'll be covering what that hip rotation is in a later video. Um, but essentially, by getting this hip rotation and getting it started and getting it moving and letting it roll off this stick right there, I'm using the, my hip joint rather than my, my shoulder joint. So I'm using a much simpler ball and socket joint here at the hip, which is specifically designed to do this motion tens of thousands of times a day. So I can use that hip rotation to get it off the shoulder and to roll off there. So one of the other things about um, the arm and moment and keeping my hand into my core. Once I start my hip rotation, as I start doing, as I start rolling the, the sword off my shoulder, you're gonna notice that I'm not going out here and trying to come around. I'm gonna keep my hand right in here and I'm gonna roll my stick right off my shoulder. So by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm keeping the, the control in by my core of my body so I don't have this lever action out here that I have to work with. So when you throw it out here and you try to come around, that becomes a lot more work. Same thing with, um, there are some, some people that teach that you throw out here first so that your opponent can't see the, the stick coming at you and then you roll it around this way, okay? Same thing, when you're, the further away your hand gets from your core, the heavier this object becomes on the other end. So by keeping by keeping my hand in here, especially for anything for me that goes sword side, that's flat snap, leg snap, uh, head wrap, leg wrap. Anything that I throw that goes over here is gonna start exactly the same way right here. And part of the reason that it starts exactly the same way every time, and it always starts with this hip rotation, is because once, it, once my stick comes off my shoulder here, at the point at which my blade is parallel with my chest. All of the power that I need to deliver a telling blow is present at this point. I don't need to make more power from here. It will gain power as it continues to the target because it's gaining speed as it goes out. But I don't need to use my arm to make more power to do that. Everything I need is already in the stick at this point right here. And from here, where my where the blade comes around my shoulder, comes off my shoulder, and where the blade comes parallel to my chest, this is the point at which I have to make a decision. And once I make this decision, I can go down, I can go up, I can throw it in a wrap, I can throw it in a flat snap. And the thing about that is, all of my shots starting exactly the same way to this point here. By the time you can figure out what's different about it, it's too late. Because if I come off here. I can go down for the leg and come off here for the head and come off here to the to the head wrap and come down here to the leg but once it gets here I have to make a decision so that's a little bit about what makes a good telling blow the physics involved in throwing good stick mechanics and how I use my body to employ those those physics I'm going to cover some more in a, in a later video, but I wanted to get started with, with this one.